I'm so excited to be here um, with all of you and to have this conversation. So um, I think we have six people joining us on Skype from around the world. So perhaps we could bring them up and we could. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. I'm waving at the screen. I should be waving here, I think. Oh, it's so good to see you all. You know, I would actually love, I always love to start just with a quick round of introductions because I'm so fascinated um, by everyone who's here. So maybe we can start um, in Bologna. All right, that would be me then. Um, I'm Alberto, I'm from Italy, obviously, and I translate into Italian. Thank you, Alberto. And in, uh, now let's see if I can pronounce every city up there. I'm going to try. Pune. Hey, it's Abhishek Suryamshi from Pune, India. And which languages do you translate into? I translate in Marathi and Hindi. That is great. And maybe we'll come into the room. I'm Els. I come from Belgium. I translate into Dutch, which is my mother tongue, and also into French and Italian. No. I'm Anwar from Sudan. I translate into Arabic. I'm Christina from Armenia, and I translate into Armenian. Uh, I'm Wataru. Uh, I'm from Tokyo, and I translate into Japanese. All right, and then we're going to go back around the world. Um, and can I go to you, Hannah? Uh, hi, I'm Anna, and I translate into Ukrainian. And to uh, Crystal. Hello, uh, I'm Crystal. I'm from Belgium. I translate to Dutch. Hi, Els. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows Els. Goedemorgen. <laughs> Very much. And to Merich. Hello. Um, I'm Mirich, I'm from Turkey, and I translate into Turkish. Well, I am actually, I have to tell you that my favorite part of literally of every conference is, um, is getting to talk to some of our translators because I just find you to be the most inspiring community I've ever come across. But one of the things I'd, lo I'd love to start with is um, something some of you know, but maybe some of you don't, which is that the translation project was not our idea, it was yours. So um, we launched TED Talks um, almost seven years ago. And from the moment that we put the talks online, within weeks, we actually started getting emails from people around the world, a number of people saying, we want to translate these talks into other languages. And one of the things that struck me, we'd get the talk, you know, the emails that said, I want to translate these into Polish. I want to translate them into Spanish. I want to, here, I've already translated this into Hebrew, here. Um, and what was so interesting to me about these emails is that um, they, you weren't asking us to translate the talks. You're saying, we want to translate these talks. We, we want to make them available, and we want to be a part of this, and we want to help. And that was just a profound moment for me of realization, and the realization of the generosity that was in, um, that was in the world. And so we actually eventually listened, and these emails actually became a little bit more insistent. They went from just saying, I would like to translate to, here's what we think you should do. We think that you should launch a project that allows anybody to translate a talk into any language, and here's some technology you could use for it. Come on. And um, so basically, we um, have listened to this community from the very beginning. This is entirely the reason that we launched the translation project, is because you told us to. And so for the last four years, we've been kind of following this community and kind of amazed and humbled to see where you've taken us so far. So you all know that the numbers, 40,000 translations, it's more than 100 languages. We're beginning to move not just from subtitling, in, but into translation of the website itself. We're going to start looking at dubbing for, for voiceover at some point soon again, because you're telling us to. Um, and one of the things I also think is really exciting is that we're now moving in the direction of translating TEDx talks that are filmed not in English but in all of your languages and bringing the ideas that are and the, the people and the ideas that are native to where you're from back into English and around the world. And so I think the, the potential and the possibility of what's coming out of this community is so profound. And so where I would love to start the conversation, I always because I always just love hearing this, is I'd love to start with with why each of you translate. Sort of what what motivates you? What um, either what motivates you? What what brought you to the project? And and what and and, and why you continue? Um, so and would somebody um, coming in over Skype like like to start? I'd, I'd love to hear what, why you translate. Why did you why did you start? Uh, for me, it started uh, with Brené Brown. It was such a nice talk, an inspiring talk. I, um, I wanted to show it to my friends, and she didn't. Uh, speak English or read English. So then I saw uh, that I could um, volunteer for translating, and I did. And since then, uh, I'm addicted to translating talks because they are so inspiring. I love that. And Brene will, Brene will do that to you. <laughs> and Marich, I think you had a, a thought. 
Well, yeah, I initially started because I wanted school children to be able to understand TED Talks because that is such an important time in their lives and um, TED Talks offer so many, uh, offer perspective into so many different professions like sociology, psychology, medicine, engineering. So they would watch and understand many talks and in the end they would be able to understand what they want in that life and uh, do what they want to do with their lives. So I started because I wanted children to be able to understand them. And then I started receiving emails from so many people thanking me for my translations. And I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love hearing that, that you're getting those thanks. We, are, we, we don't always know when that happens, but we definitely, um, Kristen and I talked about this a lot at the beginning, that we wanted to make sure that there's a system set up so that the community had access to the translators, that the translators, we, I mean, we view you as, big, as, as bigger rock stars as the speakers themselves. So we love hearing that that communication is happening. Um, what about back into the room? One or two of the thoughts on why you translate. Yeah, for me, it's, um, it's always about access, giving others access to knowledge, you know, the new technologies, the new sciences, the new thoughts in psychology, in engineering, in medicine, and, and all kinds of stuff. And being from Sudan, this is you know, more sensitive to me than, you know, it's, it's not a matter of choice for someone to, to consume this content or that one. It's a matter of, you know, scarcity. There is no content over there. So, you know, by participating in translating this into Arabic, that gives, you know, people access to knowledge, you know, to original content. I mean, it's one of the things that we find very inspiring, picking up on both what you said and Marich said, the idea that, um, you know, we all know that feeling of being inspired by a great, a great speaker or just a great teacher, and not everyone has access to these great teachers or knowledge, and to be able to, like, take the best of the best and make them available to anyone in the world, which is kind of the fundamentals of what each of you are doing, is, is so inspiring for us and, like, core to Ted's mission, I feel. Do you find that you often have to spend time kind of researching the subject or researching specific words as you delve into it to translate? Have you, there's, there's a lot of nods. Alberto. I don't really remember any specific ones. I just, um, it happened a lot of times that uh, I was translating things. Mostly it was technical stuff, but also uh, philosophical or psychological issues and stuff like that. And then I started researching a couple of words and then I started opening up Wikipedia and then uh, links from here to there. And, you know, I lost a couple of hours just <laughs> reading stuff. <laughs> and it happened over and over again. And I now I learn I know I learned a whole lot about a whole lot of things just because. There are a lot of nods, both on Skype in the room, for that. It's, I, I feel like you guys should get like a like a, a bachelor's degree for each talk that you yeah, translate. Right. <laughs> you know, right? It's like a senior research paper for complexity is complex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Complexity is complex. Okay. You have to translate that into you know your language, and then uh, most of the time you don't have the words, you know, the appropriate words yeah. to translate into your language. So you have to invent. Mm. And this is really interesting, you know? You jump into the dark, yeah. and you don't know what will right. happen there, yeah. you know? The other day, you, um, you might get a thank you note from someone. Yeah, you know, I didn't find the translation for that word. Yeah. Or you find, that is not correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, right. And I look, and at TED, we've learned when people say that we say thank you. <laughs> We will fix that. Yes, exactly. Well, you know, it's such an interesting question, right? Let's follow that for a moment because um, I, th I feel like one of the interesting, one of the many interesting things probably of translating for TED is that our speakers tend to be really at the edge of their fields, and so therefore they're at the edge of language. And um, some of the words are actually evolving. As you said, there may not be words yet in every language. Um, is this something that many of you have experienced as you've gone through? Sometimes it's, it's even for uh, the, the core TED concepts that it's difficult to find a translation, like the concept of TED Talk or TED Fellow. Yes. It has to be very TEDx short. TED, yeah. Yeah, TEDx event, maybe yeah. it's, it's a little easier, but words, Fellow, actually. I know, is, is, a, is a, a difficult one. And so now when we're translating the website, we have to be careful about how to do that. And right. in some languages, it appears to be quite a challenge. So uh, not in mine, but... Uh, right, no, I would imagine that, actually. 
and, and yes, and we always pick these words that are quite specific. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I find actually the combination of the, the way that things work in this, both the grassroots collaboration within language teams, uh, and it sort of happens both between translator and reviewer, right? So for the probably a couple of people who don't know, for every translation, there has to be a translator reviewer. You have to agree on the translation. So there's a one-on-one -on -one collaboration. And then there's the larger collaboration between your language group and the larger collaboration among all the translators. And I'm kind of curious, um, what, what have you learned about that along the way? We have people with different skills and they each bring something to, uh, to the project. So someone made, made a scheme, somebody else uh, looked at the technical solutions to, uh, to give access to information and so on. So it's, it's really this, uh, this combination and this, uh, like, like you said, it's a collaboration at different levels. Yes. Uh, and in the beginning of the project, uh, it was always only uh, translator and reviewer. But for a couple of years, we've also been having language coordinators. Yes. So a couple of people in every language group who act as, uh, I would say, as mentors. like a mentors, yes, mentors, and, yeah. Yeah. And, and and leaders, you know, volunteer yeah, leaders. Well, yes. and and it's and that has also emerged, and that's also very very interesting. And then among this community of language coordinators, we also collaborate because we face the same issues in yes. uh, our languages. So I can learn from him. I can learn from uh, from uh, Christine, even if I don't speak her language. Yes. We have the, the same uh, experience. So. That's so interesting. So going on to Skype, is there are there any um, lessons that any of you have learned about collaboration or moments, things, things that worked that surprised you or situations that you were able to navigate um, you know, in a twosome or as a group? Any thoughts there? So uh, I have learned the power of, as I said, thank you and praises because it's so so important. But people love it when when somebody praises their work and you can start a conversation from there. And something that I have done uh, recently is sometimes I send the translators some articles that I read about the subject of the talks. So an article from a newspaper that I recently read. So I sent that article to that person. Okay, if you're interested in the subject, there's this that I have read recently. And from that, that person sometimes sends me another article or some other talk. And you start a conversation and you learn so many more things because of this collaboration that we have between translators and reviewers and language coordinators. Um, anyone else on Skype have a thought just on that, on that particular topic of, of collaboration, what you've learned from each other, how it's worked? Abhishek? Yes, specific, uh, it helps specifically when there are difficult words which we need to translate. The specific words like internet, which are the broad, which we have to use it like internet only. But at the same time, the small, small terms which we need to use. So for that, Facebook group is really helpful. And the interesting uh, thing which I found is that the Wikipedia community, the which, uh, Wikipedia which is active in the local languages, so those people also translate the TED Talks. So that was really interesting uh, observation and collaboration that if I find, if I'm having some difficulty, I will post it to the Facebook group and within one or two hours, I get the solution. That's so, and it's that's such a great way to kind of use those kind of dispersed technologies because probably I imagine, well, with all of us actually, Every, all of the translators are dispersed around the world, but, be, but be, being able to kind of tap into that community and get an answer back so quickly seems such a great solution. Before, before I forget, please, yes. please allow me to just, you know, say a huge thank you to Christine Weinbigler. Right? No, I think we all feel the same, both with Kristen, who has just courageously led this project since it uh, launched, and to the full team around her. This is their, you know, their work, but it's also their passion and joy. And what I always hear from them is just how amazed they are with all of you. So this, and this is something that I just hope each of you know. I think we're coming toward the end of the session, so we'll have to wrap up in a moment. Um, but uh, one of the things that we, we want each of you to hear is we, we talk about every day how inspired we are by this community and how much we learn from you. I and mean, I think that's one of the things that is like at the, the core of an open community that we're constantly um, learning from, from how you translate, from how you organize yourself, from the, the leadership that emerges from um, this group. So, so excited to see where it goes um, in, in the year ahead and would love um, for 
for each of you who are in this great Skype conversation and each of you here to keep in touch with us. I'm June at TED.com and also through Kristen, where you want to see the project to go, where you, where you want to see TED head from here. So thank you all for coming. Thank you. We have to wrap up. Thank you so much thank to you. each of you and to each of you on Skype. I'm sorry that we got cut off by the walk-in music. <laughs>